Right, good morning. So we are in the middle of the Rebbe's commentary on the precise language of the paragraph we read just before we eat the Kaira sandwich. So before we get to that, just a comment from yesterday. Um, so Yeshua, you asked yesterday, what bracha would have Hillel made in Temple Times when they ate the Pesach, Matzah, and Marah all together? Yes. So don't have an exact answer, but uh, as my Gipple showed me, I was learning more yesterday, preparing for next <laughs> Monday when we start to do in-depth Kairach files. Um, the Rambam, who would be the only halachic authority to include the laws relevant to Temple Times as well. Right, the Shulchan Aruch only includes that which is relevant to us today. But Rambam includes all of Jewish law, including that would, which would be relevant in Temple Times. Okay. So he writes, he has an interesting view, which we're going to touch upon soon, which is that Hillel only put Matzah and Marah together. Didn't put the Pesach together at all, actually. Oh. The common understanding, that we understand the Gemara, is that Rahilal is describing what he would do with the Pesach, so the Pesach offering, Matzah and the Mara, all three together. Rambam learns that he only did two, just Matzah and Mara, which throws a little wrench into the entire discussion. But at any rate, just on the question of the Bracha, he says, he, 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 however he understands the Gemara, not for right now, but he basically says it's, uh, it was optional. You either can eat your Matzah and Mara together, or you can eat it separately. And therefore, if you ate the matzah and mara together, the bracha you would make is, thank you, Hashem, al matzah and mara. Thank you, Hashem, for the mitzvah of eating matzah with mara. That's how you would say the bracha. That's what the Pasuk says it. Right? It's bitter herbs, it's plural, right? Mm -hmm. And then, if you ate them separate, you make two separate brachas, one for the matzah, one for the mara. That's how he says it. So, in his view, you're eating only matzah and mara together. If you want to, he makes it seem like it's optional. You can choose to eat them together or eat them separately. Right? Based on the fact that the Gemara says about Hillel, that even if you ate them together, you could fulfill your obligation, right? There was an even there in the Gemara, which means you could do both. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah. That's a Gemara is a good question. But there's the even there, and therefore you could do both, one or the other. And if he says, if you ate them together, you make the bracha, al matzah If you ate them separate, you make two separate brachas. Which would mean, extrapolating from that, Following the view that says that Hillel would have eaten all three. Three? Pesach, Matzah, and Mara all together. Then you would make a bracha, something like this. Thank you, God, for giving us your commandments. Lechol, Pesach, al Matzah, Mara. To eat the Pesach <laughs> with the Matzah, and Mara. You would have to say something like that, I suppose. That, that's what you said yesterday. You thought yeah, of so that. Just, right, right. So I don't have an explicit source for that. But because Rambam doesn't include Pesach, but based on the fact that Rambam puts together Matzah and Mara together, because in his view, that's all Hillel did, then presumably you do the same if you were eating all three together. So just, uh, it's not a full source, but at least something. <clears throat> uh, I'm just curious yeah. why, uh, just curious why Rambam would not have included the, the, the Pesach with that when it says, well, it says in English translation in the Gemara that he he, he would have, or he yeah, That did. translation is based on Rajbam and Rashi interpretation. Okay. okay. Get the Gemara itself, give me a second, I'll see I saw it in the Steinsalt, the last line in one of the paragraphs. He yeah. included well, he's, Hillel. Taking, he's taking the more common interpretation, which would be Rashi Ashbam. The okay. actual word language is like this. But anyway, that answers the question in terms of the bracha. Let's see. Hillel said like this. They said about Hillel that he would wrap them together. What's the them? Well, the Steinsalt's English, it includes the Pesach. Based on Rashbam interpretation. It makes okay. Sense. Of all three? That's what Rashbam says, and that's what Rashi says. But Rambam says the them is only Matzah and Moror. Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay, so the, the uh, Prima God that we mentioned yesterday speaks about this as well, and perhaps when we do the more in-depth on Kardach, we'll look at them, that we'll, we'll look more in-depth at the Prima Godem. And how he understands um, Rambam in terms of the halacha today as well. Okay. And this changes the way he understands the Gemara from the whole from top to bottom, right? Yeah. 
Okay. But we'll leave that for now. We do our in-depth kind of, we'll do that. So now we are on um, base on the uh, page Tzadik. So that would be an inside folio of the pe thing on the left-hand side, which says base. See it there, uh, Alan? Open the thing on the left-hand side. Huh? Right, okay. So yesterday we commented on the fact that the Alter of his text does not say or doing this to remember the temple like Hillel. We don't say that. We have this other paragraph, which reads, so Hillel did, he would take the Pesach, Matz, and Mar, wrap them together, etc., etc., etc. Yeah? But we don't say these words to remember the temple like Hillel. Now, the Prima Godem, as we said yesterday, who's of the view that the sandwich is not in the fulfillment of Marar. You already fulfilled your obligation of Marar when you ate Marar alone. Therefore, he's of the view to make the statement before you eat the sandwich, declaring that this is to remember these, to remember the temple at like Hillel, to make that distinction. Until now was our obligations. Now it's just remembrance. And as the Rebbe understood it, that was that next year you don't make the mistake of thinking, hey, last year I had the sandwich and uh, maybe that's all I need. So you remember, no, no, but last year I said before I ate the sandwich that I'm doing it to remember the temple and therefore it's not to fulfill my obligation. Okay. But in the Altar view, where the sandwich actually is the fulfillment of Marar according to Hillel. Therefore, it's inappropriate to make that statement. This is a remembrance of a temple because it's actually a fulfillment of the mitzvah. Even though the mitzvah is to remember the temple, but it's a fulfillment of the mitzvah to eat Marar or the rabbinic mitzvah. Okay, that was the summary of yesterday. Now, the second, uh, uh, what's the word? Diuk, the, certain, the second linguistic choice that Emma points out is the word Haya which means was. The phrase could have read, Cain also Hillel, this is what Hillel did, is man should basically make the shkayim, when the temple stood. But the author added the word, hoyokayim, meaning, in the time the temple was standing. Why the extra word was. Now, the Rebbe is actually going to leave this unresolved. 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 Now, the Rebbe leaves it unresolved. He's just going to point out comparing it to other texts in which this phrase comes that we're doing something as they would have done in temple times and how in the other times either the word haya was appears or doesn't appear and leaves it unresolved. So let's see. The text reads, so Hillel did in the time the temple was standing. Why the extra word was. Says the Rebbe, the Chene B'Sidr this is how it appears in the Siddur Kal Yaakov, the Siddur of Rabbi Yaakov Emden, what we spoke about, the controversial fellow from uh, Altana. And Harav Reb Shapsay Rashkov, this same text appears in a Siddur compiled by Reb Shapsay Rashkov. Reb Shapsay Rashkov is a Kabbalist of Eastern Europe who uh, com compiled a Siddur based on the Arizal's mystical Kabbalistic meditations. So often, when you think of like the Arizal Siddur, it's of Shabsi Rashkov, certainly in the Rebbe's literature, that would often refer to uh, intentions or like meditations that are mentioned in the Arizal Siddur. For the most part, he's referring to Shabsi Rashkov. And uh, the Alter Rebbe Siddur, which is also built on the Arizal's teachings, heavily relies on of Shabsi Rashkov. The difference being that the Pshav Sirashkov Siddur, which is a Arizal Siddur, includes descriptions of those meditations. The Alter Rebbe Siddur does not include descriptions of the meditations. You open up the Chabad Siddur, it doesn't say meditate on this, meditate on that. It doesn't say that. But the text is largely built on those meditations, even though those meditations aren't written into the instructions of the Siddur, which the Pshav Sirashkov Siddur would include before a paragraph would give a whole, before, let's say, a text of the davening, it would give a whole paragraph of what, what you're supposed to meditate about. It's a Kabbalistic siddur. That's a Shabbat Yerashkov. So his siddur also includes the word haya, it was. Time the temple was standing. Likewise, in a book called Simcha Saregel, which is a book about Pesach that besides to a lot. Okay. So this word haya kayam, was standing, appears in all these three siddurim, <laughs> which the Alter Rebbe relied on heavily when compiling his Haggadah. So very good. But that's why the word Haya would be there, presumably because he's following their texts. 
Avo, but the Rabbeinu, looking at the Alter Rebbe himself, sort of you and we require explanation, unresolved explanation, unresolved question. Why? The Rebbe is going to cite the two other places in which we say that this is what happened in the times of the temple. And in both of those instances, it says, Bizman Shebesen Mikdash Kayom, in the times when the temple stood, as opposed to was standing. And therefore, the question becomes, if in the other two places, the Alter Rebbe did not write was, why here by Hillel is he using the word was? So what are the other two places? He says, Kivon, considering the fact, Sheba Midas Parsha Sakatoros, when we read every morning what we call Karbonus or Katoros, or before Mincha, right before Mincha and before Shachas, we read Karbonus, or otherwise also called Katoros. Anus Cheshaloi Hu, the Alter Rebbe's language is, Atahu, you are the one, etc. Bizman should base the Mikdash Kanyam. In the time, the temple was, the temple stood without the word Hayah, without the word was. The king cost of Le'il, likewise earlier. When we describe the Pesach offering in the Seder and the Haggadah, we say, good morning, Pesach, Shahayu, etc. The Pesach that our father, forefathers would prepare should base the Mikdash Kanyam. In the time when the temple stood without the word was. So it's, the question becomes, why did the Alter Rebbe choose when describing what Hillel used to do to add this extra word was? In the time, the temple was standing. Just keep it consistent with the other two times where you said in the times, the temple stood. And the Rebbe leaves this question unresolved. Okay? Where we're in the inside folio on the left-hand side. Here. Uh, wait, no, this is actually holding the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Here. Aval, but back to those Sidurim. The Siddur called, no, you're in the right place. In the right place. Uh, called Yaakov, in the book, in the Siddur by Rabbi Yaakov Emden, called Yaakov, Var Rav Shapsir Ashkov, and the Siddur of Shapsir Ashkov, which we described earlier, Bechol Hanal, in all the other places, by the Katardas and by the description of the Pesach offering, Isa Hoya Kayam. In other words, those Siddurim are consistent. They use the word Hoya Kayam in all three times. In the temple, time of the temple was standing. Okay, so they're consistent. But the Altarab is not consistent. In two times, he says, in the time the temple stood. And here he says, in the time the temple was standing. And therefore, the Rebbe uh, leaves it unresolved. Now, the, 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 the Alter Rebbe or the Rebbe? The Rebbe leaves it unresolved. That's why the Alter Rebbe chose that. One second, I want to look it up for a second, because he's making a distinction between Kol Yaakov and Siddur Yaivitz. It, yes, but there's no such thing as uh, just happens to be. Everything's precise. Mm -hmm. So if it precisely uses that way, it's for a reason. I want to see something for a second. Uh, just one. Okay, I'm so sorry. I've been saying this in the call Yaakov is from Yaakov Emden. It's not. It's from Rabbi Yaakov Kuppel Lifshitz. Live from in seven from 1740. The 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 Yaakov Emden Siddur here is called Siddur Yaivitz. So I'm sorry, I mixed up the Siddur. Call Yaakov. The other name for Siddur Yavitz is called, that's why I mixed it up because there's another name. It's why I'm looking this up. There's another name for Siddur Yavitz. It was called Base Yaakov. That's why I mixed up the name. Okay, it's Base Yaakov versus Kal Yaakov. My apologies. Okay, so the Kal Yaakov Siddur that we mentioned today and yesterday is not Rabbi Yaakov, I mean, it's a different one. Okay, but the Siddur Yavitz, Ushallah, in the Siddur of the Yavitz, Yaakov Emden Siddur, and the Siddur of Rabbi Horowitz, the Shalah, Shnei Luchas Abris, Eim, the Tevas, Hayyab, Chalgam, Elam, Elu. They are consistent in not putting the word was in either of the three places. So some Siddurim are consistent to include the word was in all three places, Yavitz, uh, sorry, uh, Kol Yaakov and Shab Seir Ashkov. Other Siddurim are consistent in not putting the word Hoya was in either of the three places, Shalah and Emden, but the Altarebbe is inconsistent. Two places he writes, the time the temple stood, and here he writes, Ham's temple was standing. And I believe that unresolved. That I believe this comment unresolved, he just points it out. Okay, yeah, what, you want to say something? I wanted, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Um, the places where they're consistent putting it in as was. Um, yeah. Is it line up with either the position of those who support Hillel versus the sages? Is, does, is, there, yeah, a, is, there, a, is there a relationship? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but I will say this. 
because it may lead to uh, an that. understanding of how they're positioning themselves vis-a-vis -vis the word was. Maybe, maybe. But just to be know. clear, there's no one in post-Talmudic era who has the authority to say, I'm choosing Hillel over the sages. If the Gemara concludes that we haven't fought, we haven't concluded the halacha, no one later can come and say, oh, well, we discovered, decided that the halacha follows one or the other. No, for sure, but I right, just so thought none maybe of them would say, oh, maybe, maybe it's consistent with how they interpret Hillel, that, but not whether they choose between Hillel and the sages. They cannot do that. Because the Gemara concludes that we don't know between Hillel and the sages. So no one post-Talmud can come and say, well, I'm going to choose one side. I'm just trying to come to the maybe, understanding Maybe it does connect to how they interpret Hillel. Yes, that is possible. But that would require deep analysis. Yeah, not, okay. not whether they choose between Hillel and the sages, but how they interpret Hillel, right? Right, that's right. That's discussion. Right. How do you interpret Hillel, right? al Rebbe or the others. Right. All right. So, so the Alter Rebbe, with what you're saying, if I understand it correctly, is that the Alter Rebbe didn't have a consistency in terms of how he used the, the word was. Yes, in, in the, that's the Rebbe's point. Which is why he's the right. only, so he's the only I'm one the among these the question that requires a consideration. Sorry? And he's the only one among these Sidurim, authors among of these Among the five Sidurim who, mentioned in this little comment. Right, okay. Maybe there are more. There are definitely more. Not for sure. But, but these five Sidurim, from what we discussed, uh, they're from what we, is, is consistent, either consistent with or without the word was. Okay, okay. Gimel. So, so they have pointed out as well that we say, right? You look at the top of the page, Cain Asahilel, right? The bold letters, top, top, top. Kena Sahil is what we read before we eat the sandwich. Kena Sahil is what Hillel did. His mind basically make the Shkaya. Hayakayim, the time the temple was standing. Hayakayim, he would wrap. Pesach, Matzah, Umar. Others drop the word Pesach. They only say he would wrap Matzah and Mara without saying he would wrap Pesach, Matzah, and Mara. Well, wrap means to completely envelop, so. Put together, I don't know. Okay, later. The is, he probably did wrap them up because in those days, Matzah was soft. In fact, oh. in many communities, in some communities, in some of the old communities in in, um, yeah. in Yemen, they actually yeah. have soft matzah. So I've it's actually, it. I saw when I was in Yerushalayim, there's Yemenites that had like, it looked like a crepe. Specifically, they have uh, wrap, uh, soft matzah, and if that's, which is probably the more originally authentic. We do yeah. fat, we do it hard because it's less likely to become comets. Right. It, it's hardened. Mm. So we just cook deeper, so it's less likely to become comets. Right. But they actually dafka have soft matzah, and which means... That Hillel probably had the first shawarma. Right, because right in lamb. the temple times. It was lamb. He put in his charoises, a little sauce. He had lettuce in there for his marar. He had some spicy because of his marar. And it was wrapped in the soft wrap. So it was the first shawarma probably. And the Pesach offering was cooked on a spit. Right. <laughs> Using pomegranate sticks. So it was very flavorful. So uh, <clears throat> he might have had the first shawarma wrap. Hey, sorry, what do you want to say? It's a little joke. Isn't it? I'm saying uh, it, it's it seems consistent with how they used to do the mincha offerings in the temple. That's correct. They had different correct. varieties. Correct. They had crunchy. Wait. They had crunchy right. ones. They also had soft varieties of the mincha. That's correct. This week's parsha, right? Well, last right. week's parsha. Right. That's right. correct. Yeah. yeah, it could be a good title for the video. What? The first shawarma. The first shawarma. <laughs> first shawarma. Okay, uh -huh. so the Alt Rebbe's version says that Hillel would wrap the Pesach matzah and marar. Some people drop the word Pesach and they only write he would wrap matzah and marar. Why? Because what are we describing here? Are we describing what we're doing? Are we describing what Hillel did? What do you think? Are we describing what we do, we're doing and we're doing it to remember Hillel, mm -hmm. in which case only use the word matzah and marar? Or are we describing what Hillel did, in which case you have to include Pesach, matzah, and marar? So which that's the describing? question. Sorry? That's the question. That's, that's the, question. the question. It could be interpreted either way. I mean, it's... That's right. Important. Now, look at the, let's look at the phrasing on the top, right? Cain Asahilal. I'm going to stand up. comment better. What's the opening word? Cain Asahilal. What does that mean? Like... Change the words. Cain Asahilal. And so did Hillel. What's so? No. So, like this, Hillel did. Like what? Like what I'm holding in my hand. Am I holding a Pesach in my hand? No. So why are you mentioning the word Pesach? Or you, or you say, no. Like this, what Hillel did... What I'm describing, which is have Pesach Matzah and Marar, in which case you have to include the word Pesach, because that's what Hillel had. So depending on how you understand what we're describing, either what we're doing or what Hillel did, you include the word Pesach, you don't include the word Pesach. Clear? Hmm. Now let's see was comment. What do you want to say? Well, <clears throat> I guess the question is, is that do we do the Karech in order to 
the same character what Hillel used to do? Or do we do Karek because Hillel did it? Oh, we've hit the last three classes on this. No, right? I know, but I'm saying. We, not that everyone should we do it because of Mara, no? Right. That's why it's full Mara. Okay, I mean, this is the big, this is the big discussion. Yeah. Why are we doing Karek? This is a major discussion. God willing, in our Karek file classes, right. we're going to... We're going, on, we're going to unpack it a bit more. For now, we know two views, the Primagodim and the Alta Rebbe, which we spoke about yesterday. Okay, let's see the comment. Gimel, the language of the Alta Rebbe is Koirach Pesach Matzah Moror, that Hillel would wrap the Pesach Matzah and the Moror. Now, the Ladas HaMafarshim, because according to, skip the parentheses for a second, according to most commentaries, Cain also Hillel. This is what Hillel actually did. He had Pesach, Matzah, and Moror. Yes? Now, this is only according to some interpretations. Other interpretations don't say that. Let's see the parentheses. Milvad, with the exception of Haramba. In the parentheses after Gimel, there you see it. Here. Milvad Haramba, with the exception of the Ramba. In the laws of Chametz and Matzah, chapter 8, Halacha 6. There the Rambam writes that actually Hillel only had Matzah and Mara together, not Pesach Matzah and Mara. As I noted earlier, the Gemara says, this is the words of the Gemara. They said about Hillel that he would wrap them together. Them. You, you them. mentioned them. What's the them? So Rashi Rashbam says Pesach Matzah and Mara. Rambam says, no, the them is matzah and murder only. Right? Follow? Mm. Okay. So, according to most opinions, that he had Pesach, matzah, and murder, the Alter Rebbe includes, Hillel would have Pesach, matzah, and murder because we're describing what Hillel did. Right? So, the Ladasim, of, back, to the, back to the text of the Alter of the Rebbe. It's, inter so, it's interesting, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, it's interesting that Rambam didn't take a, a majority position on this. Yeah, not, not uncommon. Really... Especially since the majority opinion here is contemporaries of him's, maybe even a little later than him. Okay. Rashi's a bit before him, but the Rashbam is after him. He's around that same time. Okay. He, he doesn't have to, like, uh, he takes the majority of those that precede him, the Ga'inim. Ah, okay. And if that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. But they're contemporaries of his, so he doesn't have to take their their view. Okay. Okay. So now back to the Rebbe. The Ladasim of Farshim, according to the most opinions, skip the parentheses, Kainos Hillel. This is what Hillel actually did. Pesach, Matzah, and Mordor. So in the Rebbe's view, the word Kainos Hillel, so Hillel did, is a description, not of what we're doing, but what Hillel did. And therefore, the Yash with Pesach, if I skip the word Pesach, and I'll just say, Hillel used to have the Matzah and Mara together. I'd be saying a lie in my story. Mm. A lie by omission. Mm. If I just said that this is what Hillel did, he would wrap the Matzah and the Mara, it's a lie. Not according to the Rambam, but according to everybody else, it's a lie because he would have actually more. He would have the Pesach also. Okay. Now, those who are of the view that you don't say the word Pesach, you only say the word Matzah and Mara. Why? Because I'm saying this is what Hillel did when I'm holding a sandwich, right? So the word this goes on what? On the sandwich. So how could I say that this is what Hillel did? He had the Pesach Matzah and Mara. He didn't. He had the, I don't have it. So I can't say this is what he did. Right? This is what others others argue, right? Because this doesn't describe what Hillel did, but describes what's in my hand. Follow? When I say these words, so did Hillel. What does the word so mean? What am I talking about? I'm talking about what I'm holding in my hand. Right. So... Do I have a Pesach in my hand? No. So what am I saying? So Hillel did with a Pesach Matzah and Mara. Mm. I don't have a Pesach. It's almost like, it's almost like so other say, like, like other people, which is why they don't put the word Pesach in there. Yeah? Follow what do you say, uh, Yeshua? No, you're just saying he did like this, like it, not completely. Hey, that's a question of how you interpret the words. So there is now defending it, right? I, I preamble to you what there was going to do here. Yeah? Okay. 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 So Mashiach, Shebechot Yaakov, that which the Chot Yaakov, commentary in the Shulchan Aruch, asks, Dim Cain, if you include the word Pesach, says the Chok Yaakov, how could you say, this is what Hillel did, holding a sandwich, the ain't Pesach when I don't have a Pesach in my hand. So how could I say, this is what Hillel did, he didn't do this. Right? So, but furthermore, the truth is, either way, you're saying not truth. Whether 
you say, don't put the word Pesach in there, and you say, so Hillel did put Matzah and Mara together because I'm holding Matzah and Mara, it's a lie. Hillel didn't do this. He had Pesach also. If I say, if I include the word Pesach, then how can I say, this is what he did? This is not what he did. Right. So either way, whether I'm saying this about what Hillel did, and I include the word Pesach, then, it does, then I can't say it about what I'm holding in my hand. And whether I'm talking about what I hold in my hand, I can't say this is what he did just by omitting the word Pesach. That's not true. He did have Pesach in there. So how do I say this is what he did in describing what he actually did and while simultaneously being true to what I'm holding in my hand? Because what I'm holding in my hand is not what he did. He also had a Pesach in there. Is that by using the word was? Is that where you... Okay, well, let's see. That's what he's going to do. What do you say? Saying that's perhaps the reason why he uses in this case, unlike the others, the, the Haya. Okay, uh, how would that help? Well, he's saying was, meaning... You're still saying was anyway. The Pesach was. was. You already have the word was. Okay, look, 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 look. You have... So Hillel did in the times temple was standing, he would, haya, again haya. So the second haya already uh, deals with that. The first one's not necessary. Okay. Follow, but that's a good, that is a good point, but you already have that. And maybe in a minute, in the next comment, we'll see from the that we'll address that as well, which okay. maybe we'll do on Monday because we're running out of time. Okay, let's 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 uh, continue reading here. So I want to finish this comment. So how do we reconcile this, right? How can I say this is what Hillel did when it doesn't match what he did? Because I'm holding only Mats and Murr, he had Pesach too. So whether I say Pesach or I don't say Pesach, something about what I'm saying is not true. Mm. Either I'm lying about what he did, because he used to have Pesach also, or I'm lying about what I hold in my hand, because I only have Matzah and Mara in my hand. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So either I'm lying about what I'm holding in my hand, or I'm lying about, this is what Hillel did, he would take the Pesach, Matzah and Mara. That's not true to what I just said, because I'm not holding Matzah, Matzah and Mara, Pesach, Pesach, Matzah and Mara. Or I drop the word Pesach, and I say, this is what Hillel did, have Matzah and Mara, because I'm holding Matzah and Mara. But hey, he didn't do that, he had Pesach also. Right. So either way, I'm lying. Either about what I'm holding or about what he did. So it says, says that Rebbe Yishlema will suggest, I already foreshadowed the answer earlier, which is the Tevas came. When I say like this, Hillel did, I'm not talking about what I'm doing. I'm talking about what I'm describing. Nim Shechas Lamata. It follows to what I'm about to say, not about what I'm doing. So when I say, this is what Hillel used to do, or in other words, if saying that in English is, the following is what Hillel used to do. He would wrap Pesach Matzah and Mara. Nothing to yeah, do maybe with my hand. I'm describing what he did, period. So like this he would do is not a description of what I'm holding, but a description of what I'm about to say. <laughs> right? So in English you would say, the following is what Hillel used to do. And in Hebrew, you could say, Cain also Hillel. So the word like this Hillel did can either be like this, right, or it could be like the following. Mm. Says that I read it like, like the following. Mm. And that way it's not a description of what I'm holding, it's a description of what I'm about to say. Mm. That's what it says. Vihi has halasa inyan. This is the beginning. It's like an intro to what I'm describing. Tain osa hillel, like this hillel did. Kasha yisape, as I'm about to tell you. Not about not what I'm holding, but I'm about but what I'm about to tell you. Okay? And therefore, v'loyahutzrech, l'sayim, ucharisi zechelazet. Ucharisasi zechelazet. Some people say, and my rap is a remembrance to that, what hillel used to do. Even though our raps aren't the same, because mine is Matzah and Marar, his is Pesach Matzah and Marar. Because it's self-explanatory. I'm holding a rap, and I say, you know, the following was a hill he used to do. He used to have Pesach Matzah and Marar. Contextually, I understand that I'm holding this rap to remind myself of the other rap that Hill used to do. That's the Prima Gaudens position, no? Just... Based oh, on well, the well, okay. Only? Yeah. So the remembrance here, yes, it's a good point. No. But the remembrance here is not in fulfillment of remembrance. It's a it's a fulfillment of the commandment to have marar, which is in turn to remember, right? Okay. And they're actually to your point says ukanal, and like I said earlier, We try to minimize the amount of words, unnecessary words we say between the bracha and the wrapping, because again, like you said, you're fulfilling the mitzvah marar here. So I don't want to say, this is just a remembrance. That's added extra words. Just say the facts. What Hillel used to do is the following. He would wrap Pesach Matzah and Marer. And then I ate my sandwich. And it's self, it's self understood that I'm eating it in relation to what he did. Because that's the right way to do Marer in the Alkabah's view. Okay, right, because it's a mitzvah to, right? You said yesterday it was a mitzvah to eat the Marer with the, with the Matzah. According to Hillel. 
According to Al Trebbe's interpretation of Hillel, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, now Al Trebbe's going to give, so you got that? That was clear? <laughs> the word Cain, like this Hillel did, is not a description of what I'm holding, but a description of what I'm about to say. Like the following is how Hillel did it. Pesach, Matzah, and Mar together. And if I could include the word Pesach, because I'm not describing what I'm holding, I'm describing what Hillel used to do. Okay. It's a play on words. It's a play on words. Now that I was going to give us another interpretation, then actually I am talking about what I'm holding. When I say like this, I mean literally like this, what I'm holding. Yeah. But how does that match up with Hillel? Hillel used to have Pesach. I don't, I don't have Pesach in mind. So how do I, how do I reconcile that? You've said that we're not actually referring to what you're holding. Oh, but that was going to give a second interpretation now oh. in which Cain does describe what I'm holding. <laughs> and yet it still doesn't contradict the fact that I'm not holding a Pesach in my hand, which is not what Hillel used to do. So says the Rebbe. This is ingenious. The linguistics of the Rebbe is ingenious. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, Lamar. Or you could say, Cain, the word like this means not this exact sandwich, but just as I am wrapping the marar and not eating it alone, Cain, so too, Asa Hillel, Hillel did it too, to wrap the marar. So the like this is not, the like this is not describing that we're eating the same thing. But just like I'm not eating the marar alone, so too he wouldn't eat the marar alone. It so happens to be that his mara is together with Pesach and, ma and Matzah, and my mara is only with Matzah. But there's still a similarity in that we are both wrapping the mara, not eating it alone. So and that's the proper way. Did, I don't mean this exact sandwich, but I mean just like this, where I'm not eating the mara alone, mm. so too Hillel didn't eat the mara alone. Mm. And that's the proper way to fulfill the minutes for mara according to Hillel. According to Al-Tarebbe. Not that about to say, but for Ak, and specifically, beautiful Yeshua, Yeshua Lashita said more as Akin, according to Al-Tarebbe's view, HaKairach Ikare Babesh V'chavis HaKhelas Marar. According to Al-Tarebbe, the primary reason to eat the sandwich is to fulfill the mitzvah of Marar. So I'm saying, just like Hillel would only eat the Marar with the Pesach and Matzah, because that's the only way to fulfill it, so too am I, eating, not eating the Marar alone, because you cannot fulfill the Marar by eating alone. So and the so whole too, ringer... Yeah. What? The whole ringer here was the Pesach. <laughs> exactly. But now, okay, but the point here it is... Was, it was the red herring in the in the mix. Yes, but you see, here's the point. The Kodak sandwich is... is why did, why, did, why did Hillel eat the Pesach, Matzah, and Marar altogether? Because the only time the Torah says to eat Marar is together with Pesach and, Marar, and Matzah. Pesach, the Torah says to eat it alone. Matzah, the Torah also eats, says to eat it alone. Marar is the only thing that comes up only in the context of Pesach. Right? Matzah is mentioned twice. Once alone, eat matzah. And once with the, once with the Pesach, eat matzah. Mm -hmm. But Marar only is mentioned in the context of eating it with Pesach and, ma and matzah. Which is why the Hillel said, okay, you got to eat them all together. So what I'm saying is, I'm doing the exact same thing. Hillel's of the view that Marar may not be eaten alone. So me too, I'm doing the same thing. I'm making sure not to eat the Marar alone. So I could say, Kainosa, he did this exact thing. In other words, when I say this, I'm describing not the sandwich. I'm describing my fulfillment of the mitzvah of Marar. Mm -hmm. Like this. This fulfillment of Marar to not eat eaten alone is exactly like Hillel did not to eat the Marar alone. So it lines it's up exactly like the view. Right. It's exactly like this, how we would do it. Exactly. So now not the Cain, how they would do it because they had the Pesach. We, we don't. That's right. So two interpretations to the word Cain. Either Cain means the following is how Hillel did it. Option A. <laughs> or just like this. <laughs> That Hillel made sure not to eat the Marar alone. I too am making sure not to eat the Marar alone. In fulfillment of his view that Marar cannot be eaten alone. Right. It just it just so happens we, we can't fulfill the part of Pesach so happens, because we don't have it. Exactly. It just so happens we don't have Pesach to be in the mix, but we're still fulfilling Marar in our best ability by mixing it with Matzah. Like Hillel's right. view that Marar, Marar cannot be eaten alone. Because Taylor never gives Marar aloneness. Right. In Hillel's view. That's okay. Fun. So there we have so even though the Rebbe didn't resolve the word Haya, he resolved the word Cain beautifully. Mm. Okay. A wonderful day, Eden. Uh, good there's day. Two, there's still a uh, good Shabbos. There's still two Shabbos to the Rebbe on the Kairach, and then we'll go back to our Gemara, which takes us back to Karpas, yeah, uh, Orchatz Karpas. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Wonderful day, everybody. A good Nehra Shabbos. Good Nehra Shabbos. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.